Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Josh Epstein, and I'm the marketing specialist here uh, with the TDA Perks Program. I want to thank you for attending today's webinar. Today, we've got Elena Wolf, who is the commercial marketing executive with the TDA Financial Services Insurance Program. Uh, she's going to provide an overview on uh, dental business insurance and including uh, business owner's policy, general liability, workers' comp, crime, and cyber coverage. Um, again, just before we start, TDA Financial Service Insurance Company, they work exclusively with our TDA members. Um, our Tidkins team provide additional support through several sponsorships, uh, not only, but to the TDA, the Smiles Foundation, Department of Annual Session, and they continuously support our, our meetings and symposiums and conferences and uh, around the components as well. So um, happy to have them here. Now, also keep in mind that Perks is a TDA member benefit. So we offer close to 25 different additional uh, vendors for you to utilize, as well as a resource section filled with TDA journal articles and podcasts, and also our tape webinars that we archive there. So we are recording this webinar. It's going to be available. Uh, Q and A period at the end as well. So, uh, if you're ready, uh, Elena. Yes. Um, thank you for that introduction, and um, thank you to the TDA for allowing me to come on here and speak a little bit about insurance. I know this is not everyone's forte, and um, and that's why you know we are here to answer any type of questions that you might have. Um, so we're just going to do just a quick overview about your um, about over your insurance policies. Um, again, my name is Elena Wolf, and I've been at Higginbotham for a little over five years, and in the industry for um, a little over ten. My current right role right now is working with the TDA and to help find business coverage for dentists um, in the practice. Um, so if you're looking at um, adding a new line of business or just needing some walkthrough of your current um, insurance policy, you would contact me. I also work with uh, Michelle Salazar. Michelle helps with any changes that um, you or your practice might have on your policy or insurance certificates. Um, she would be your point of contact. Or you can contact me and either or, it, it doesn't matter. We're, we both work side by side and we sit by each other also. The presentation overview, um, these are a few things that we're going to go over. Why do I need insurance? Um, what types of insurance should I consider? And as my business grows, what other insurance coverages um, should you know about? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, why do I need insurance? Well, it's to protect you from a financial loss that you cannot afford yourself. Um, unless you're self-insured and, you, you know, therefore you're, you don't really need it. But um, mo like most of us, we do. So um, it could either be a contractual reason, you just opened a new office suite and your landlord is requesting an insurance certificate, or if you just purchased a building or even purchased um, some equipment and your bank is requesting an insurance certificate um, also, so you would contact us, um, we would put a policy in place and issue those certificates for you. Um, also, just uh, legally, um, you're, you're legally obligated to provide workers' compensation for your employees. Um, Texas is a little bit different. Texas, um, unlike other states, you're not required to carry workers' compensation for your employees. Um, however, it's a, it's a huge benefit to have, and we'll touch base on that a little bit later in the uh, webinar. And also, just psychological um, peace of mind. Um, you know, you've worked really hard to get to, to where you are now, and, and it's just to ensure that all of your hard work isn't negated by unforeseen circumstances. So either your, your commercial insurance policy is written with Hanover, Hartford, Liberty Mutual, Chubb, 
It's going to be written on a business owner's policy form. A business owner's policy form is that it includes commercial property, commercial general liability, and there's some other possible coverages that you can either add, it's already included um, in, into your policy, and those coverages are your data breach and cyber liability, um, professional liability, your E&O. Um, you're not, you don't necessarily need your E&O because you would have your MedMal insurance, but it, it is included in, a, in certain policies. Um, in the Marine, hire the non-owned auto, employment practices liability, and employment and, and employee benefits liability. Um, those are just some possible coverages that could be added and or could be added. General liability. What is general liability? Well, it covers tangible loss. And it's bodily injury or property damage that arises from your product or premises. Um, a classic example is a slip and fall. You have some spilled water in your in the hallway, a patient comes in, slips and falls, um, and is injured. Um, they would need to go to the hospital or, or a doctor. Um, so your policy would pay out. Your advertising and personal injury, it's intended to cover claims of libel, slander, disparagement, advertising, misprints, or even copyright infringement. <coughs> your tenant legal liability is intended to protect your business against claims of damage sustained by other, others at your premises. Say, for instance, you're in a suite or you're in your suite, you leave something plugged in, it causes a fire, it spreads to the other suite, you've now caused some property damage to the other suite. So this coverage, it would pick up. Some policies are written with a 300,000 limit or even a million limit. Um, I like to um, put a million on there because um, the cost of adding it or increasing it to a million is it, it's nothing, maybe less than $100. So I strongly suggest um, looking at that, those limits and getting them increased. Um, your medical expense. Um, this is what we call a goodwill coverage. Um, so the patient that slipped and fell earlier, um, you tell them, hey, go to the doctor, have them check you out, let's get this taken care of, where it doesn't escalate into something less later. Um, usually some policies are written at a 5,000. I recommend doing at least 15,000 because believe it or not, that medical extent limit um, Goes, it goes quickly if you, if you do use it. And of course, defense costs. Um, that's one of the main reasons why you have liability. It's to pay legal expenses for certain liability claims brought against your business regardless of who's at fault. So if someone's suing you and you don't have insurance, you're self-insuring yourself. Um, but you know, if you were to have liability, you have a four million aggregate, two million occurrence, that's um, those are the limits that I provide um, when I'm quoting um, for the TDA. Those are the limits. Again, if you have a $2 million, $1 million, the cost to increase it to $2 million, $4 million is less than $100. So I strongly suggest that. You also have some property, um, property coverage. And this covers your building, your BPP, your business income. Um, your building is your uh, your structure, and there is usually a dollar deductible that's involved when you have a claim and that you are responsible for paying for. Your business personal property that's intended to cover claims of damage to property you own, rent, or lease at the covered location. Um, basically, if you were to flip your building upside down, anything that were to come out um, is your BPP limit. So your office chairs, your equipment, computers, desks, chairs, rugs, anything, anything that can move and fall out of your building, that's what that limit is for. Um, some banks, if you do like a build out uh, and you're required to carry betterments and, and improvements, 
it might be like the cabinetry or like the flooring. That is a building coverage, of course. However, um, some insurance um, companies put that under business personal property, so that limit is just increased. Um, again, there's a dollar deductible that's involved that you are responsible for paying for um, once you, if you have a claim. Um, I know in North Texas, and, and sometimes, uh, I think they're in the Houston area, there is a wind hail deductible that you are responsible for. Um, that, that's separate from the other property deductible. And that's usually a, per, well, that's your percentage of your total insured value. So if you have a $100,000 building, your wind hail deductible is going to be, if it's 1%, it would be $1,000. Your property also includes business income, and that's intended to cover the loss of income or profits of any extra expense associated with a covered property loss to a covered location. Say, for instance, you had a fire at your office, and because of this, this fire, you have to rebuild. And, um, you're not seeing any patients, so therefore you're not making any money. And that's just intended to help um, you resume or stay in business while repairs to the building or equipment or your stock is, is being done. Um, where the building and BPP has a dollar deductible, your business income has a waiting period deductible. And that waiting period is anywhere from 24 to 72 hours. It's just depending on how your policy is written. Um, there is some extra expense coverage included in your business income, or should be, so just um, look at your policy to make sure um, you, you have extra expense. But that's to cover any necessary expenses paid to minimize the suspension of normal business operation. So if you had to hire some additional help, that payroll would be included, or if you had to rent an office space, while um, your building is being repaired or you're leasing extra equipment, um, that extra expense would fall into that. So like most policies, um, there is um, some major exclusions that do apply. And unfortunately, earthquake and flood is not or is a major exclusion. So if you had an earthquake or flood, your building or BPP or any of those losses, um, they would be excluded because uh, of those of those um, earthquake or flood. And you can rent, write that on a separate standalone um, policy. So there are some specialty coverages included in a box. You have employment practices liability. We are hearing a lot of this type of stuff in the news right now due to social media or whatever the case may be, but this provides coverage for alleged claims of sexual harassment, discrimination, or wrongful termination. Um, some policies include a, um, a limit of maybe 10000 It just, it just depends on who the carrier is with. I strongly suggest um, you increasing that limit or um, getting a separate standalone policy. It is based off um, your employees and your sales. Um, but I know Hanover right now is doing minimum of $250,000. So if you're not with Hanover, we can definitely look at um, remarketing and getting some quotes to provide you that limit. Also included is hired and non-owned. Hired and non-owned is any business that, um, if you even occasionally use a vehicle that's not owned by the business, um, I strongly suggest you getting this coverage. Um, I typically put it automatically included in a box at a million dollars. It follows the liability limit. But hired and non-owned, it covers the liability expenses for accidents involving vehicles that your business uses for work purposes. So, for instance, your employee is driving their car, they want to go drop off a deposit at the bank, and they get into an accident. The other driver that 
they injured, um, sues your business um, in medical treatment and repair damages would be would follow into that along with um, defense if they were to sue you. Um, hired and on own would pick up that, that cost. However, it doesn't pay for the physical damage to the non-owned vehicle, so their personal insurance would apply first, and then hired and non-owned, your commercial hired and non-owned would be secondary coverage. It's not intended to be primary. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. There's also some crime coverage. The crime is found um, in your property. It provides coverage for employee theft, computer theft, and fund transfer, um, transfer fraud, forgery, and alteration. Also, some coverages to consider are is worker compensation. And we talked about this at the beginning um, a little bit. Um, this coverage is to protect um, you from lawsuits resulting from workplace accidents and to provide the medical care and compensation for the lost income to employees um, hurt in the workplace. But um, Texas, um, unlike other states, do not require employers to carry workers' compensation, so many go without it. However, um, workers' compensation is one of the cheapest coverages that you can get, and it could cause so much, um, it, it could hurt you really bad if you were to get sued by your employee. And the benefits of to have a workers' compensation is that your injured employee um, loses their right to sue you in exchange um, to recover benefits, benefits from their injury and that's called sole remedy. So I strongly suggest at least getting the quote um, for your business. Um, workers' compensation is based off payroll. It's an estimated payroll, um, so that's how your rates would, um, well, your rate is based off your operations, which is a dental practice, but it would be uh, based off uh, payroll. Um, also, another coverage to consider is commercial umbrella policy. This covers um, claims that exceed your policy limit of any of your underlying insurance policies, such as your general liability, your employer's liability, that's your workers' compensation, or um, hired and non-owned. Um, commercial umbrella does not go over property, unfortunately, only the liability policies. So basically, if you have that four million aggregate on your liability and you have a one million umbrella policy, that gives you five million dollars in coverage. So I strongly suggest um, getting a getting an umbrella policy or at least getting a quote. Typically, um, insurance companies it's usually around four hundred dollars per million. So if you had a million dollar umbrella, it'd be 400. Two million dollar umbrella, it'd be 800. Um, that's just estimated though. Also, another coverage to consider is cyber liability. Um, right now, cyber liability is one of the most talked about coverages and requested coverages that we're seeing right now. Um, every day we're hearing of cyber, some cyber, some type of cyber hacks and some type of security breach. So if you're storing any of your patient information online, you have a greater risk of being hacked. Um, some bot policies do include it, but it's usually a very small limit. Um, I know right now we're working with Chubb on putting a program into place, and it's only going to be exclusive um, for the PDA and um, working on getting a standalone cyber policy and to provide you a million dollars um, in coverage. Um, not sure when that's going to be put into place, but we are working on it. Um, some bulk policy, like I said, some bulk policies include it. Um, and if you were to have a total breach, that little bit of coverage that's automatically included, it would not be enough as the notification cost alone um, would be substantial. And as you can see right here, in 2015, hacks occurred every single state in every single state in the U.S. And here's a, a quick breakdown of the targets um, by type of entity. So 
some businesses were the target of 40% of the security breaches, medical and healthcare entities, um, that's professional offices, um, made up of 35.4%, government or military made up 8.1%, and educational institutions made up 7.4%. I didn't put the, um, the stolen, the, like the records, um, but 40%, I think it was like a million, a million records or something. So, but the average cost to um, notify these are around $150 per lost record. So, if you, I mean, they, you can do the math. So, 154 times, you know, the 40%, that is it's huge. And again, that that liability limit would just eat up your, the, just the notifications would just eat up that limit. And there's so much more to cyber than just notifications. Um, cyber includes your privacy breach expenses. That's what we were just talking about. So, and it also includes customer support, monitoring, and forensics. Also includes security and privacy liability. So that's the payment of damage and claims expenses arising out of damages concerning privacy breach. That's your third party. And then you have your first party, which is your employee's privacy breach. Um, and any other claims that um, are unauthorized. And then you have your online media. Um, and that is personal and advertising injury arising from your online website, including um, any of the slander, disparagement, um, def def defamation, and libel. You also have your business interruption and lost data. So going back to the business income, if you had a fire, this is if you have a security breach and you had to close your operations or do some investigative work and you can't work, um, your business income um, would apply. Also, another coverage to consider right now is flood. That's that's an, um, right now, that's a talk about the most requested coverage that we're getting right now is flood coverage. This um, helps protect your business from damage costs that come from flood water. A commercial flood insurance policy will not only protect the location of your business, but also the physical content and assets. A commercial flood insurance policy is designed to protect your business if your floors, walls, ceilings, equipment, and fixtures as well as your furniture inventory um, or any of your BPP um, sustains during a flood coverage. Um, if, do you need in commercial flood insurance? If your um, business property insurance doesn't cover flood, which most don't, <laughs> you should consider at least getting a quote for flood. <laughs> Even if you don't live in an area that doesn't flood, if your business um, has moderate rainfall during the year, and even with moderate rainfall, a drain could be clogged and eventually overflow, and your place of business causes some flood damage. Or like we had this past or last year, is with the hurricanes. Um, your typical bot policy excludes flood coverage. So a flood policy would have needed needed to be in place to to pay for those damages. Um, some flood policies, most flood policies don't include business interruption. So we would have to quote um, business interruption with flood, and that is it's very costly. But I strongly suggest um, at least getting a quote where you guys where you can see the difference of if you. Um, were hit by the plane or if you had a payout and you could see you know the difference it could be substantial um, again those are just some of the coverages that um, some bot policies include and we can um, look at more there are other coverages that you should be aware of so if you would like for me to review your current policy or go over certain risks that you might have with your practice, you can 
call or email me and I will try to help you out the, the, best, as I, the best I can. Or you can contact Michelle Salazar and if you can't get a hold of me. Um, thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, um, just let me know. Josh? Yeah, okay. Yeah, Elena, thank you so much. And uh, we really appreciate your time with us and everything that uh, you and, and uh, TDA Financial Services <laughs> does for our TDA members. I do see one question coming in here. And um, here it is. Uh, do I need to carry workman's comp or worker's comp for my employees? And can I pick and choose who has that work uh, comp coverage? Um, no, you cannot pick and choose um, who has worker's compensation coverage. Um, it's an all or nothing um, type, of, type of deal. So, however, um, if you do get workers compensation, the, the dentist or the owner of the company has a right to be included or excluded from coverage. Um, so, usually most dentists exclude themselves um, from coverage and put all of their employees, or, or you can add, your, or add yourself if you would like, but no, you can't pick and choose um, your, who gets workers' compensation. Only the owner can be included or excluded. Um, great question. Thanks, Josh. Sure. Um, let's see. I think we have another question. Oh, this is about starting another practice. So I'm starting another practice. Uh, do I need to purchase a separate insurance policy for that? This is a good question. Okay. Yeah, that is a, that is a great question. Um, so you can purchase a separate insurance policy. However, if you already have a dental practice um, policy in place, we can always add that name, that new entity, and that new location onto your current um, policy um, and schedule that location with the applicable property um, coverage limit. Either you own the building or the contents that's inside your building we would schedule that limit. However, your liability limits, you are you are sharing those, those DL limits. Um, so I strongly suggest either putting a umbrella policy in place or you can put a, a separate policy into place. Just I guess it just depends on how you allocate your bills and stuff. I know some, some dentists like everything to be on one and I can, I can split everything up. Um, if you would like also, but yeah, you can, or you can um, put it on your current policy and we can add it um, separately. Um, thanks, Josh. Yeah, sure. Um, let's see, let's give a second here. Um, okay, I think that's it for our questions, but you know, ladies and gentlemen, we, we can, we're gonna actually provide um, Elena and her team with uh, your information uh, from the webinar today, and, and they, they're going to be able to get uh, in touch with you and, and really try to make sure that they've answered all your questions individually. And if they have anything uh, else they need, um, they can you can get them over. They'll get they'll get in touch with you that way. But uh, and also, you know, of course, the webinars are all of our webinars are always recorded, uh, so you'll have them. Uh, they're in the resource section here, and they'll be sent out via email as well. Um, do you have any additional information? You can also just you know, get with Eric Titke and his team, and that's for all different types of insurance, whether it be uh, health or business or uh, anything of, like that. And that's at 800 677 And you see Elena's uh, contact information here. And I work very closely with Eric and his staff, so you can contact me at the TDA if you'd like. And that's 512-443-3675, or just shoot me an email at joshtda.org. And uh, please visit the website, tdaperks.com, so uh, you can get a, an idea of all our other vendors that, that, we, um, that we put in front of you. So uh, without that, I think, uh, Elena, do you have anything else that uh, would you like to add today? Um, well, I mean, just, just know that, I mean, if you do have a commercial, uh, you have a commercial insurance policy, nothing is set in stone. So if you're looking at um, changing or adding, um, just contact me and then we can look at um, marketing your policy and um, you, you're not tied to one carrier or even two. We do have um, multiple carriers to choose from. So if you're not happy with the, if you've um, had some clean issues or some type of billing issues and you're not happy with your current company, 
just contact me and we can look at marketing. It's, it's, and again, your coverages or your company, your, it's not set in stone. So um, you can change and we can add and we can modify to, you know, to your preference. Awesome. And I know that uh, there also, Eric also sends out some really interesting articles that he gives to us again from the journal. There's a lot of information on insurance. It's definitely, you know, it's a, it can be a complicated issue. So we're here to help. And um, yes. you know, we really do appreciate everyone being on the line with us today. And, and Elena, I want to thank you once again. And uh, all right, well, we're going to end the webinar now. And uh, again, uh, Elena will be in touch. All right. Thanks, Sounds everybody. good. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, guys.